All right, guys. So today, uh, today I want to just do an open format, open topic, mastermind. Um, we have a good mix of agents on here. We got some experienced ones, some newer ones, all different levels. So I want to just do kind of an open uh, format. So what I want everyone to do is to go into the chat and I want you to write down at least one thing, one area you need training on. Is there a hurdle you're having? Is there something you don't understand about the business? Um, just what do you need help on? It could be anything. So go into the chat, into the Zoom chat, type in. It could be processes. It could be sales. It could be marketing. What stuff do you need coaching on today? Let's get everyone to type at least one area you would like to improve on, one thing you need help on. And our job today is to try to coach you through some of these or point you in the right direction, help you gain some more clarity on these things. So far, Connie wrote, understanding the lending side timeline. And this is a mastermind, guys. So the point of a mastermind is participation, right? You're either participation, participating as someone asking a question or you're participating as a contributor and someone helping coach because there's a, we're all putting our minds together to help each other out. So it requires participation. So I need everyone to at least jot one thing in the chat. Got Juan Castillo, managing pipeline other than Firepoint, okay? We'll go over that. What do you need help on? What's one area you need help on? Have a better flow of conversing with people to transition into the appointment. I like that. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna try to get through as many of these as possible. So everyone put something in there and then I'll look at them and I'll see if there's any of them that are that really stand out, but we'll try to get through as many of them as possible. Hello. I'm gonna give it a minute or two for you guys to fill that in. Good job. Good job. I know I gotta ask you how you're doing too with your um just with your do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just do it. I'm sorry. Get it done. I think uh, it's your address. What else we got? Tonality in conversations, having a better flow of conversing, scale up. What else? What else? Chris, what do you got? Just type something in the chat. What's something you, you need help with? Francisco, did you type something in there? Sandra. <laughs> let's go. Come on. Yeah, there's something you need help with. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. We won't get started until everyone puts at least one thing in there because everyone, everyone needs help at one point or another, right? We all following up with clients who are three, six months out. There we go. It's silly, but can we tell which way a door is facing online before going to the property? Any tips? Eh, that's a good one. All right, now we're getting somewhere, guys. See, look, you gotta spit out the ideas, guys. Spit out the topics and we will get some coaching. Let's go. All right, we got some stuff to work with. Street view, there you go. Better at suggesting rather than telling. Okay, I like that. Now we can work with this. Um, really quick, I'm gonna share my screen just to point you guys to some resources before we start. I just wanna make sure everyone understands. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so if you don't already know, EXP has over 40 hours of training every single week 
And in order to host the training, you have to be an icon agent. So all of these trainings are hosted by icon agents, meaning they're doing over, uh, I think it's like over a hundred units or over $500,000 a year in GCI. So these are the top agents in the company host these trainings online. Um, so if you don't already know, I want to point you here. It's expcloud.com forward slash calendar. I'm going to type that in the chat as well. Make sure you copy that, put that as a bookmark. And if you ever need training on a certain topic that we're not training on, there's a ton of training on there, guys. Uh, let's just look at what they got today. EXP Bootcamp, Mastering Pre-Construction Sales. Um, look at, even in Spanish, Como Trabajar Con Compradores, right? It's even in Spanish, How to Prepare for an Appraisal, YouTube for Real Estate, Commercial, Explain, New Agent Stand Up, Content Creator Mastermind, Latino Presenta, so there's even stuff in Spanish, The Soul of Real Estate, Role Playing Clinic. There's so much stuff, Accounting 101, um, Recognizing and Adapting to Your Client Behaviors, How to Win. Social media mastermind. You see all this stuff, guys. Short-term rental cash flow tips. How to improve your lead follow-up process. All right. So those are all just uh, today. And then tomorrow, you see a bunch of them. Um... So there's a ton of training on here, guys. I just want to make sure you guys know that uh, because we do a ton of training here on the team. But outside of the team at EXP, there's a lot of training. So if there's anything you want to work on, like contracts, anything like that. There's always training happening every single week. Um, okay, cool. And the other thing I want to point you to is all the recordings for our trainings are here on our YouTube channel. As you guys can see, these are all the trainings that we do. They're all recorded, right? There's hundreds of videos on here from all the trainings that I've hosted. There's even some interviews. You want to see how uh, Hervin is getting so many deals in contract. I interviewed him here. There's a 25 minute interview with Hervin where he talks about his business and all the different things about him. Um, so if you don't know how to get there, guys, PRG coaching, PRG coaching.com. That's the shortcut to our YouTube channel. So save that as a bookmark. Every time I host a training, I record it. I put it on the YouTube channel. PRG coaching.com takes you to this YouTube channel. Cool. All right, let's get after it. So let's go down the line. And it's not just going to be me talking, guys. So if you have something to uh, to share or input or some coaching that you can offer, um, then I would definitely uh, chime in. Raise your hand and chime in. Let's go down the line. So Connie said, understanding the lending side timeline. Um, Connie, can you unmute yourself and tell me what you mean by that? I feel like. I have a really good understanding of the real estate side in terms of an escrow timeline, but I don't know what goes on on the lending side. Okay. Um, so what I would point you to is to our buyer's consultation because that has the roadmap, right? I think I want like a better understanding of uh, like timelines for for the lender. Like I, I completely understand the escrow side but I don't know when all the documents need to be in how long it takes to be fully underwritten what kind of things are required afterwards um I I like know a very basic understanding but I I guess I just want to go more in depth got it got it um I think the disclaimer that I would give you right now is that number one is every lender is different so every lender has different timelines um, it depends. Are you working with a direct lender? Are you working with the credit union? Are you working with a broker um, where it's going to vary? So the process is the same for every lender, right? They got to they got to go through underwriting. They got to get uh, clear to close. They got to get docs. They got to fund. They got to record. All those different stages are the same. But where you're going to see the variance is lender by lender will have different turnaround times for how quickly they get from one step to the next. So I know like with. Um, with like uh, credit unions, for example, they sometimes can take a little bit longer because there might be more steps that they have to go through because that's basically they're lending their own money. 
Um, with bigger banks, they may have like more built out processes, you know, where they have like different departments who handle different parts of the, the file. So it may be a little bit quicker. Um, with the broker, it's just gonna depend what lender they send the, the deal to. Um, that's gonna differentiate, differentiate the timeline. So I know I'm kind of giving you a broad answer, but it's hard to give you specifics because it really just depends on the lender. But what I have found is that uh, like underwriting, for example, that can take, that probably takes the longest in the beginning, right? Because what happens is they submit, they submit typically everything online. So there's something called like desktop underwriting DU approval. So anytime you have a, you start a loan, the lender has to go online and a loan officer and punch everything into the system. And the system will run it through like an automated approval process. And then it'll say, okay, yes, based off everything you entered, you have a, a DU approval or a desktop underwriting approval. And if it gets desktop underwriting approval, that makes it faster because the system already kind of pre-approved it and then it can move forward. Now, if something comes back where maybe there's like a credit issue or there's something where um, they're not exactly within the guidelines, then it would have to go to like a manual underwriting. And that's when it can, it, it has to go to the underwriter. Now the underwriter has to check everything manually. So that can extend the time. Um, so that's, from my experience, that's what happens. It's the underwriting process that's the longest time. Um, I've seen some lenders underwrite, like within a couple of days, some lenders take like a week to two weeks to underwrite, right? It just depends on that particular lender. So I think a good, a good rule of thumb is to whatever lender you're working with, um, maybe just ask them like, Hey, what's your guys' typical, uh, you know, typical turn times. Or if you're working with Alliance, like, Hey, which bank are you guys sending this to? And what's their turn times? Are they quick? You know, do they take longer? Um, so the underwriting is one thing, right? And then you guys have the appraisal. So the appraisal has to be ordered through a third party company, uh, appraisal management company. And then that has, they have to assign an appraiser. That also is uh, seasonal as well. Like when the market was way hot last year, there was like so many transactions happening. The appraisals were taking a lot longer just because all the appraisers were busy. So sometimes we weren't getting appraisals back for like a week or two weeks. And that was holding up the transaction. Um, I would say under normal circumstances, probably a week it might take for you to get an appraisal done. Um, so that is also going to vary depending on how busy it is and stuff like that. Um, I think those are the two big things, right? Once you get it underwritten, once you get the appraisal done, then the lender can spit out conditions. And hopefully there's, there's not a lot of conditions. Hopefully the loan officer did all their homework up front and kind of sent in you know, a full package and sent in all the upfront paperwork. This way, it, there's very little conditions that the lender is going to ask for on the, after the underwriting. Um, clearing conditions, that can take a handful of days as well. Sometimes it's, you know, two or three days. Sometimes it's three to five days if it's, if they're busy. So you got the underwriting and appraisal happening, then they're going to spit out conditions. Then you got to send the conditions in. Um, and then it might take a handful of days to get the conditions cleared. Once all everything's cleared, now you're clear to close. Now they can issue the loan docs and then it usually moves pretty fast after that. Like loan docs can get out within a day or two, you sign, you send it back and then you can fund and record usually within a couple of days. So the bulk of it guys is the underwriting up front and the appraisal happening and then clearing any conditions. Um, I'll give you an example. Sometimes like there may be conditions that the lender issues that are hard to clear. Like, oh, we want proof of this or we want, or we saw this on your credit report. I need a, some sort of statement. So then if the client has to go back and dig that whole thing up, then you're like at the mercy of like, well, how long does it take the client to give us the necessary documentation, right? Um, I don't know, is this helping you understand a little bit more, Connie? Yeah, I think it's it's still a general idea, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for exact timelines, it's going to be really lender specific. It's, okay. it's lender specific and that's a bit of a moving a moving target. Right? It is a moving target. Um, I wish I could say, "Hey, yeah, 3 days for this, 2 days for that," but it's it's honestly it's not like that. Um you're that's why most lenders will say like 30 days is is roughly the close of escrow. If we 
have everything up front or if it's a clean file, we can probably get it done sooner, maybe 25 days. If there's a little bit of hiccups or bumps in the road or conditions that we didn't expect, then it might take a few more days, right? So there's always that buffer. So I'd say 30 days is a good rule of thumb and it can go like plus or minus uh, depending on the conditions. Now, one thing to note guys, everybody right now is that now that the market has tightened up a little bit, lenders are being more picky right now because everyone is trying to, there's a risk factor, right? When you lend money, it's all about risk, right? So they're looking at the market, they're looking at all these things. So a lot of lenders are adding additional requirements and additional um, overlays to their rules and to their guidelines right now. So I anticipate that loans are probably going to take a little bit longer going forward because of the way the market is right now and lenders starting to tighten up. Um, they may change like the credit uh, credit score requirements. Like let's say it was a 620 for FHA, but now that the market's a little bit tighter, now maybe you need a 640. So they're, they're going to see little things like that happen, which of course is going to affect um, – people's ability to get financing and also the timelines because um, people have to respond and answer, you know, whatever the lender is asking for. I know it's a little long winded guys, but this is all like getting into the weeds, right? Like digging in a little bit and getting a little bit deeper with how some of this stuff works. Um, for some of you guys that are new, you'll pick it up little by little, but always go back to your lender and just ask your lender, like who are we working with? What's their timeline? What's your guys' timeline? Cause it's going to vary. All right, let's move on. Managing your pipeline, Juan, other than FirePoint. Uh, tell me what you mean by that, brother. Yeah, so let's say um, right now I'm, I'm saying appointments is going to be with different senior agents, different uh, loan officers on each one. Uh, is there like any Excel sheet that you already have maybe a pre-existing where I can like start, you know, adding it on there? So that way I, I know how to keep track of my deals. Yeah. Um, Anybody have, I know Deliri had something that she was sharing with everyone. I'm going to pull it up and see if I can um, send it to you. But Carla, do you have anything you use? How do you manage your pipeline? So I have FirePoint and I have, so I have a Google Sheets because if I'm out and about showing properties, I can take a look at it. But ultimately your question is like managing your pipeline. You yourself as an agent you should be the one technically knowing what that spreadsheet looks like. So for me, every morning I look at FirePoint, I look at my sheet spreadsheet and on that spreadsheet, it shows like what are my leads are, which one is hot, cold, warm, or like warm, cold. And then on that, another tab is like, how many transactions have I closed? What's the projected like gross and what's the commission structure and all of that stuff. It's like a, it's like a routine every morning. So basically for me, when I first started, I was using the CRM that's provided. So for you it would be FirePoint and for us it's gonna be FirePoint. And you have another one that's gonna work for you because Dillery system would be different. My system would be different. It could be Enrique system would be different. So for you, you have to like sit down like, okay, if I'm lacking this today, what type of spreadsheet should I use for me? Because you're the only one's gonna use it. No, exactly. So that, well, that's where I painting where I was asking if anybody has some, uh, maybe a few templates where I can choose from or see what I can do since the pipeline. I'm just starting my pipeline. So, you know, to be organized. So if anybody want, has anything, you know, that way I can point me in the right direction or share with me, that'd be great. I would say for, for the starting off for sheets, create like a Google sheet since you have like the PRG email and start there and then maybe create something that's like, okay, in your first tab, you have to understand like the triangle, you know, like the lead triangle, the scale, right? You have to like figure out like which one is the warm, which one's the lead, which one is like the one I'm using for like my mentors and stuff. So, I mean, I could share mine, but ultimately it wouldn't work for you, but I can try. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, Carla. And I, I think Juan is, um, well, I'll get you a copy of Delirious. It's 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 really similar to what Carla is talking about. But I think a good exercise is for you to create your own, because once you create your own, then you'll you'll figure out how to play around with it. And then when I give you Delirious, then it'll be a lot easier for you to use that one and understand it, right? So the things you're going to want to look at to under to understand your pipeline. Remember uh, the CRM FirePoint. That's like where you keep all your leads, right? Like that's the big pond for you. Uh, using the tags and the statuses and your notes is going to be really effective in FirePoint.
But then let's say like you got like your hot ones, right? Like your top 20 of them that you're trying to keep really close tabs on. You either get really good at using FirePoint and just like go all in on that and like become a master of FirePoint and customize it and use tabs. Then you don't need a spreadsheet or you can have a spreadsheet that kind of backs you up where you take, that's like your short list, right? Because FirePoint, you know, when you have a lot of leads, it can become a little bit overwhelming. But most of the time it's overwhelming for people because they're not managing their FirePoint correctly, right? It's just all unorganized and they're not, they're not up to date with their statuses. Yeah, and um, exactly. So it's like uh, right now I've been playing around with the FirePoint, adding tags or kind of seeing how it goes. But I just wanted, I'm like, before I get to so many leads, you know, try and see if I can get organized while so we're working with the FirePoint as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, that makes total sense. Tags are probably going to be your best friend and setting up filters that you can quickly click on are probably going to be your best friend. So let me, let me quickly show you that real quick. Uh, give me one sec. I'm not going to spend too much time, but I just want to show you just really quick on, on FirePoint. Like here's a good exercise for you to do. So if I go to my leads, um, Number one, like my leads need to all be up to date, right? With statuses, because if they're not up to date, if they're not up to date here, then most likely you're probably not going to keep them up to date in your spreadsheet either, right? Like, because those require you to update them as well. So I say a good exercise is to, I'm just going to use a test lead here. Um, so this is just like a test dummy lead. This doesn't belong to anybody. But basically here in the tags, if you need us to create tags for you, just let us know and we can create tags and then you can just click on them. So let's say like there's a certain lender you want to add on there. Maybe it's Rudy. We create tags like Rudy is the lender or Delary or whoever it might be. Then you can just quickly tag them and then you can filter by those tags as well. But the main ones that you're going to want to use is the status, right? If it's nurture or hot. Um, and then obviously keep the notes up to date and your tags, like your timeline, right? And then what I would do is a shortcut to manage your pipeline is once they're all tagged and, and, and statuses are up to date, then what you do is you create a filter. So if I were to filter just my hot ones, right? So I already organized them, I tagged them correctly. Now I only wanna see my hot ones, that's a smaller list, right? And those are the ones I want to look at every single day. So once I have a filter of my hot ones, you see 157, I can do a bookmark right here. If I bookmark this, right, and I can say Juan's hot leads, and I hit done, now that becomes a bookmark here. So every time I want to get to that filter, I just click on Juan's hot leads, and then I don't have to go in there and filter it again. All you got to do is just keep the statuses up to date, right? And then I can do another one and I can say, okay, all my nurtures, right? So this is a little hack and I go to nurtures. I have 1,070 nurtures. Now I'll do a filter. I'm sorry, a bookmark. And I'll say Juan's nurture leads. Okay, so done. So now I have these bookmarks right here. And then on Google Chrome, you can drag these bookmarks up to the top and you can have them right here in this little bar. So I can have uh, Juan's hot leads right here. And then I'm gonna drag Juan's nurture leads. Bam. So now you see at the top right here in this bar, I have Juan's hot leads, Juan's nurture leads. Can you guys see that? Okay, so now every day when I come in, I don't have to like start like going in and like filtering stuff and all that. All I got to do is just, just change the statuses. If I change it from hot to nurture, it's going to appear on this filter. So if I just want to go back to my hot ones, I just click that right there. And then bam, it's going to pull up all my hot leads. Now check this out. So this Maria Perez, right? That's a hot lead. If I go in there and I change it to a nurture, Right now, the status has changed, and now I click on nurtures on my tabs. She now appears here in my nurture list. So, that's like a way that you can organize your FirePoint 
where you may not need spreadsheets, right? You could do the spreadsheet route. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. If that works better for you, then do that. But those are two different options is you have a secondary spreadsheet where you kind of have like your short list and, or you just organize the hell out of FirePoint and you create those little shortcuts. And then all you got to do is just click on them every single day and you know who to call and who to focus on. Is that helpful, Juan? Um, it is, yeah, for sure. I think the advantage of doing everything through one system is that it's less to manage, right? Um, but there's some of you guys who are really good at spreadsheets and you just like the way spreadsheets, you like the layout, you like how it looks, you like being able to move stuff, tabs, there's nothing wrong with that. So you pick what works for you, but whatever you do, go deep and go all in on that and make sure like you really master it and take it to the highest level possible. That's what you got to do. All right, y'all, we're getting somewhere. Um, having a better flow of conversing with people to transition into the appointment. And then I saw someone else say tonality and I saw say someone else say better act suggesting rather than telling. Those are all kind of have to do with each other. So who said uh, having a better flow of conversing with people transitioning to appointment? All right, uh, Francisco, unmute yourself, bro. Uh, yeah, so something that I tend to do, I suppose, is speak with people. And like they will tell me almost like their whole like life story. Mm -hmm. And then um, afterwards, like um, when I'll bring up like the appointment, it will be like, oh, like they're not really interested. But it was because it was my fault from like uh, asking so many questions at first rather than trying to book the appointment at the beginning and then asking the questions after rather. But that was something Rob was say saying, uh, get the appointment over with first and then go after the LP mama and any other questions they might have. Got it. Okay. Um, that's going to depend, right? It's going to depend on the context of who you're calling. So like, for example, if it's a Zillow flex and it's an incoming call, then yeah, you can go straight for the appointment, right? Right off the bat. If you're calling out to people, you're going to have to build a little bit more rapport before you ask for the appointment, right? So just knowing like what, seat you're in or what position you're in is important right if they're calling you well then you're in the driver's seat you're in the control seat right so you can say all right let's go ahead and book the appointment and then you ask the questions after if you're calling them and they've never heard of you or you're calling an old lead from three months ago or six months ago or a year ago and you're just this guy francisco you know who's calling me it's you can't just go straight for the appointment you know, that might sound, that might be a little too firm and, and too quick, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, I would definitely ask the questions. And then the best way to transition to appointment is, I want you guys to write this word down. Here's what I recommend. Here's what I recommend, or here's what I suggest, or why don't we do this? Something to that effect, right? That's the transition statement for you to offer the appointment, right? Because you can call, you can check in on them. They can tell you their life story, blah, blah, blah. You ask the questions. Okay, where were you looking to buy? Where were you looking to move to, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, okay, great. You know, it sounds like you have a plan there. Here's what I recommend, right? Let's go ahead and set up a time to meet. When we meet, here's what we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over A, B, and C, right? We'll go over where you wanna move to, the timeline, yada, yada, yada. And then you go to the close. I have some time in the morning or the afternoon, which one usually works better for you, right? But that's it. Like sometimes it's just, we don't have the closing phrase, right? Like you do a good job at building the rapport, but you got to now close the loop, right? By saying, here's what I recommend, or why don't we do this? Or, hey, based off what you just told me, I think we should do this, right? Or here's what I, here's what I recommend to you. Um, and then, and that's, that's basically it, right? And then what's gonna happen is they're either gonna say, two things are gonna happen. They're either gonna say, okay, yeah, great. Or they're gonna throw another, like a rebuttal at you, right? So let's role play that real quick, uh, Francisco. Yeah. Um, I want you to tell me, here's what I recommend. Um, hey, Ricky, here's what I recommend. Um, you could definitely sit down and so we could talk over like what's uh, 
the best case scenario for you as to like where to move and what fits your budget? And uh, yeah, yeah, well, when would it best work for you in the morning or in the evening? Okay, so let me stop you there. Um, you got the gist of it, but what's gonna make the biggest, the biggest difference is by you now telling them what you recommend, not kind of asking, right? Because you already built the rapport, right? So you already got them to loosen up their guard. They already talked to you. You know, they've already told you their life story. So they're, they're a little comfortable now, right? They're not, they don't have their guard up. So now this is where you got to like push a little bit more, right? Instead of saying, here's what I can, what I recommend. We could do this. You're, then you're giving them an option of we could, or we couldn't, right? I want you to say, here's what I recommend. And now you, this is now where you got to like turn on the sales part a little bit more and be a little more direct. Here's what I recommend. Let's jump on a 15 minute zoom, right? Not we can, you're telling them now. Let's jump on a Zoom, right? We're going to go over your exact criteria. I'm going to show you what's happening with the market. And then we're going to see if it makes sense for you to move forward and buy a property in today's market, right? Um, are you normally available in the mornings or the afternoons? Which, you know, what's better for you? You see how, how like, I'm now taking a little more control of it. I'm not kind of like scared like that they might say no, right? So let's try that one more time. Right. Because remember, I already told you my whole life story. We've been talking for 10 minutes. Now I need you to really deliver it. Right. Great. OK. Um, great, Enrique. Here's what I recommend. I recommend that we sit down on a Zoom meeting so we could talk over like the numbers, see also like the areas that are best fit for you. And with that being said, when would it best work for you in the mornings or in the evenings? So don't tell me when it best works for you. Right. Oh, <laughs> You're, you're letting, you're giving me too many ways to get out. Right. And this is, this is a small detail guys, but this makes a big difference in, in you closing, right? This is the close. You need to tell me when you're available, right? Okay. Hey, I have mornings or afternoons be assertive, right? Um, so let me see, uh, tell me one more, just say, here's what I recommend. Here's what I, here's what I recommend Enrique. Okay. Now tell me like, you're a doctor and I need to listen to you. And like, otherwise I'm going to die. Like, and you need to tell me like very assertively and you need to like be serious with me now. Here's what I recommend Enrique. I have an availability tomorrow morning at uh, 11 in the morning. Would that, is that okay for you? You're still asking me if it's okay, right? <laughs> yeah. So remember guys, this is for everybody. If you are the nice guy all the time, you're not going to get sales, right? And I'm not saying be mean, or I'm not saying don't be professional, but if you're always like trying to just be too nice, right? You want to be nice a lot of the time, but at certain points, you got to, you got to really tell them, right? You got to be a little more assertive, lean in a little bit more. Here's what I recommend, Francisco. Let's jump on a 15 minute Zoom, right? Even like my tone, right? Let's jump on a 15 minute Zoom. In that Zoom, we're going to go over all your criteria. I'm going to go over the process and I'm going to show you exactly how we're getting our clients the best deals in this market. That is what you want, right, Francisco? Yes. Okay, now say that back to me. Like an authority, bro, like you're the principal of the school, dude, and you're telling a kid, right? Like, I, I how, I'm, I'm trying to give you examples of authority. Like you're the police, bro, and you're telling me like what I just did wrong, right? All right, Enrique, well, here's what I recommend. Based on everything that you told me, we should definitely uh, hop on a Zoom meeting. Tomorrow I have availability 11 in the morning as well as 1 p.m. And we'll definitely go over your criteria as far as what area best works for you as, as far as the budget as well and any other questions you may have as well. All right. Now close the loop by saying that is what you want, right? That is what you want, right, Enrique? Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Okay, right. great. Right? Let's book the appointment. What time is morning or afternoon better? No, say that. Is morning or afternoon better for you, Enrique? Uh, probably afternoon. Great. I have a one and three and five p.m. Uh, let's do it three. Great. Three p.m. tomorrow. Sounds good, Enrique. All right. All right. Let's give it up for Francisco. I know I'm putting you on the spot, bro. But did you did, did you guys recognize the difference? Right. Like I had to guide him a little bit. But did you guys recognize the difference from the first one that he did to the last one? Right. Because Francisco was just being the, the laughing kind of smiling kind of nice guy right which is great bro like that's your personality mm -hmm. but you have to know when to turn it on right carla does a really good job at this carla what can you say 
Practice your scripts. <laughs> I cannot express that enough. You're too nice. If I was on the phone with you, I'll probably not book the appointment. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just honest. I'm just honest. So if I were you, I think you're very nice. And if I would book the appointment, I would literally say like, hey, is this afternoon morning best for you? Okay. Do you think 10 a.m. to 12 is good? So you're, you sound more authority and you have to practice the scripts because if you don't, I could tell. And add that, and if we hop on into Zoom and you sound like that, I will be bored. So imagine if Carla was your client and you were trying to get book an appointment with her. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I will probably, I'll probably dominate the conversation because <laughs> I'll be bored. Right now, now for Carla, Carla's a little bit more her personality type. Is she's a little bit more of a straight shooter, right? She's she's a high driver. That's what makes her really good. Now, you also got to understand who you're talking to as well. So if you're speaking to someone like Carla, you have to be direct, bro. Because if you're not direct, they're going to sense weakness and they're not going to want to work with you. You have to lead them. If you have someone who's really bubbly, then you might be a little bit more bubbly as well. But you, but you still have to be assertive at the end when you're going in for the appointment. So you have to be able to adapt to who you're talking to. Um, and remember, it's Francisco, you're newer. So this all comes with practice. And it all, and the more you practice, the more confident you'll get because you're not having to like remember what you're trying to say. You're now focused on how you're going to say it, right? If you don't know what to say, well, then that's a whole nother thing, right? You can, you can read that script 30 times and memorize it. And then once, once you read it 30 times and now you know what it is, now it's practicing how you're going to say it. And that's where the assertiveness comes in, right? So all of you guys on here, right? If, if you're, if you're finding that you're talking to people and you're having good conversations, but you're not getting the appointment, it's probably because you're not being assertive enough at the end when you're going in for the close, All right? Also, Enrique, I want to add too with Francisco's uh, scripts, mirror the client on the very first 30 second on the call right away. But be careful when you mirror them because you're going to come across clients that are just like, oh, he's just saying whatever I told him to. Yeah. So just be extra cautious in the first 30 seconds of the call. If they sound bubbly, be bubbly. Maybe a little bit of buttering up that needs to be done. Or if if I am on the call on the other line, straight to the point. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. You got to remember, guys, I put out a video a while ago, is you can end up in the friend zone, right? There was a friend zone video. If you guys go on my Instagram and watch it, if, if you haven't seen it. But the whole gist of it is that when you're always trying to be nice to people, they may talk to you, they may hear you out, but then they won't do business with you because they just think, oh, he's nice, he's cool, and they're being more polite and respectful, right? But will they, do they think you can help them negotiate the best deal possible? That's going to come from how confident you are when you speak, right? So nice people, like it's, you got to be nice, right? At, at certain times, you got to be polite. You got to be professional, but you have to be a shark as well, right? You have to be able to, when you see that, when you see it there, you got to go in for the kill. So Francisco, what I would write down somewhere just for you to memorize is stop being nice, be more assertive, right? More assertive, less nice guy. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> and spend, yeah, Carlos said, spend 15 to 30 minutes a day practicing this right and even practicing not just a script practicing saying it assertively right there's one thing to say hey it's it's francisco from prg real estate i'm following up on your call but you're like no okay how do i practice this being assertive hey it's francisco i'm following up on the call you inquired six months ago and i wanted to get back to you right there's a difference in my voice how i raised my voice how i was a little faster a little more to the point that all makes the difference it's um, one thing as well, Enrique, too, if you guys understand the power of linguistics and how people say things, it's more for about personal growth. If you sound better, I will take you more seriously. So just be listening. I know when you're driving on the car, 30 minutes, driving to the showing appointment, talk to yourself, even though you would look crazy, just talk to yourself. And you'll probably notice those things like, oh, shoot, I said as well, like four times. And I yeah. can hear those things. So practice, practice. It's practice, gonna be better practice. And here's what you got to remember, guys, is you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. If you don't take the shot, 
because you're scared you're going to be too aggressive or you're scared they're going to hang up. I'd rather you be too aggressive and then coach you on pulling it back a little bit than to you to be not aggressive and missing a bunch of those opportunities, right? The worst thing that's going to happen, guys, is you go in and you're assertive and they say no. That's the worst thing that's going to happen. No one's going to kill you. No one's going to show up to your house. No one's going to, you know, whatever, right? As long as you're professional, just because you're assertive and pushing a little bit, nothing's going to happen, right? But I guarantee you'll get more appointments for sure. And then you'll adjust it and you'll find your way. All right, y'all. Um, let's see, what do we got? I think we hit a couple of these. Let me go back. Better flow, tonality, we talked about that. Following up with clients who are three to six months out. Um, let's talk about that real quick, uh, real quick Chris. <laughs> uh, following up with clients who are three to six months out. What's your question? Yeah, um, I had a couple of people say that like, they're straight up not ready to buy it and to move forward. They would decline a meeting over Zoom and then okay. they just ask, hey, uh, can you send me properties? You know, okay. so what would be like the best way to, to go through that? Um, I think the best way is going to be ask questions. Connie, do you have any suggestions for how to follow up that you can share? like with long-term clients yeah uh you can you know send something that is in their criteria like an you can ask about how their family has been if you had been talking about a previous like family thing or previous event or if they're looking for a new job you can tell them about market updates um you can tell them of an off-market listing that you had seen that you think would fit uh, you can see if anything has changed. There's a lot of ways that you can reach back out. Yeah, and, and I guess what Connie is saying, right, in summary, is you want to give them relevant information to their situation, right? Because just sending someone properties, it's like, we're not going to be better than Zillow, right? Zillow is the best place or Redfin. We're not going to be better than them at sending properties. So you'll send properties just to stay top of mind so they get emails from you and they see your name. But when you follow up, you have to touch base on whatever the previous conversation was, right? So like Connie said, if, if, you, if they said, hey, you know, we're, we're holding off right now because we just had a death in the family. Then when you call them back, you wanna write those notes down and then you wanna bring that back up. Like, hey, just giving you a follow-up call. I know last time you guys were going through some family stuff. I just wanna check in. How's everything going? Have things settled down, right? Because then that lets them know that you're listening and that you're not just like, hey, you still want to buy a property, right? So making sure that you're bringing up relevant information from the conversation. So then after a while, they feel like they know you. And then think about, Chris, to yourself, what are things that a buyer or a seller would deem valuable? And what's important to a buyer or a seller? What do people want to know? Go ahead and unmute yourself, Chris. Um, if you're a buyer, wanted, if you're a buyer, what do you, what's, what's important to you? What would be good information for you? Uh, maybe market updates okay. and see if there's any changes in the market with like okay. prices and stuff. Anything else? Okay. Now, let, so let me do this. If you're going to go buy, um, if you're going to go buy a pair of shoes, right? And the sales guy were to, you go, you go to buy a pair of shoes, you don't end up buying them, but the guy keeps your number and he calls you back. What would be good information for him to call you back with? Um, if there's anything new. Okay. What else? Uh, changes in price. Price, right? Sales. What else? Um, that's all I can think of right now. Okay. It's good though. Right. So just think about it, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're selling shoes or if you're selling houses or you're selling guitars or cars, what's relevant to people is going to be like, what's going on in the market, right? Is there any new products that have come out in this case, any new houses that may fit my criteria? Is there anything on sale or any good deals right now? Right. 
it's the same thing if you're buying any product, right? Those are all like fundamentals of advertising, marketing. They're always telling you what's going on, what's new, what sales are happening, right? New information, right? In this case, when you're buying a home, you need financing, right? So if there's changes in the financing, there's new products in financing, new discounts, anything like that. Those are all things that people want to know about. So for you to be valuable, you always obviously want to keep keep in mind what their situation is and talk about that, but then offer them all the newest stuff that's happening, right? Hey, I want to keep you informed. This is what's happening in the market. Hey, I want to tell you about these, a new house that I saw that might fit your needs because I know you need a backyard, a big backyard. Or, hey, there's a house that just dropped their price um, that's in your criteria. It's, a, it's on sale now, basically, right? Or have a list of discounted homes. Right. So just think about it like everyone, when you're thinking about following up, think about like what would I think would be valuable if I was buying a home. Right. And it's all that basic stuff. And then that's that's all that's going to be the basis of all your follow up. Right. Does that make sense, Chris? Yeah. OK. Um, so remember, anytime someone says they want to wait. You always ask why. Simple, right? Oh, hey, you want to wait three to six months? Hey, not a problem. Um, you know, why do you want to wait three to six months? What's happening then? And it's, as long as you say it in a nice way, then they'll tell you, oh, well, because in three to six months, you know, I might save a little bit more money for down payment or in three to six months, my kids are out of school or in three to six months, I think there's better deals. You're trying to get to the root of why they want to wait, right? And then you're able to use that as ammunition. So. Uh, let's role play that real, real quick, uh, Chris. So I want you to tell me you want to wait, right? Just throw some scenarios at me. Um, okay. So go ahead. Tell me you want to wait three to six months. Hey, Enrique. Yeah, I just want to put uh, my home search on pause right now. I can probably just want to wait three to six months. Oh, okay. You want to wait three to six months. Hey, I totally understand. Uh, let me ask, why do you want to wait three to six months? What's happening then? Um, probably by that point, I can save a little bit more money for a down payment. Got it. So you'll save a little bit more money for the down payment. That makes sense. So it sounds like having enough money saved and stuff is important to you. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Have you looked at your situation, like what you qualify for now with your existing money saved, with your existing down payment? No, I have not. Okay. Okay. All right. And that's great. And that's exactly why, why we should be talking, right? Um, what I would recommend now I'm going back to remember what I told Francisco, what I would recommend is we jump on a zoom. I'll have my lender on the line and I know you want to wait through to six months. So this is going to be more informational for you, but what we're going to do is we're going to see where you stand right now and what you qualify for with your existing financial situation. And then we'll give you a cu couple different options and we'll map out a game plan or a roadmap of how much you exactly have to save, what that's going to get you. And we'll see what makes sense. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Okay, great. I have mornings or afternoons. What's usually better for you? Afternoons. Okay, so I have afternoon. I got tomorrow at two or Thursday at five, right? Boom, appointment booked. So what I want to illustrate there, guys, is that just because someone says they want to wait, if you just hang up the phone and move <coughs> on, you could have, that could have been an appointment that you could have booked. But if you just say, oh, okay, you want to wait? No problem. Let me ask, why do you want to wait? What's happening then? Just curious, right? And then now I was able to figure out why he wants to wait. It's because of the down payment. Then my follow-up question was, hey, have you looked into what you qualify for with your down payment right now? That's exactly why we're talking. Here's what I recommend, right? So, you guys see this, it's just a matter of just asking questions and being comfortable with asking the question and, and not being afraid of them like getting upset, right? Because you miss the shot if you don't take the shot. Um, Chris, you want to, let's role play that now. Now you're going to do the same thing with me. Okay. All right, Chris. Yeah, I just want to put my search on hold for three to six months. Hey, that's great, Enrique. I totally understand. Can I ask why you want to wait three to six months? Okay, so let me stop you right there. So tonality needs to come into play, right? Like sound curious more, right? More curiosity. Um, be excited for me that I want to wait. Hey, totally understand. Not a big deal. Let me ask. 
you know, what's, what's happening in three to six months? Now I'm like, I'm putting my curious hat on, right? So start one more time. This is where your tonality is going to come into play. All right, I want to wait three to six months, Chris. Yeah, Enrique, I totally understand you want to wait three to six months. I'm just a, a bit curious by what, what's going on in three to six months. What's going to happen? Um, well, you know, I just want to save a little bit more money on my down payment. You know, honestly, just want to save a little bit more. Gotcha, Enrique. I totally understand. Uh, what I recommend, Enrique, let's get together on a Zoom and see where you stand right now as far as your down payment goes, see what you can qualify for. Uh, are you available tomorrow in the evenings or afternoons? Okay, so I want you to I want you to do one more step before you go for the appointment, right? Because you got to build a little bit more rapport. So now you want to ask me a question. Have you looked into where you stand? Do you know where you stand right now? Or do you know exactly how much money you need to save? Okay. All right. And then I'm probably going to say no, right? Because most people have it. Then here's what I recommend. Now you're you're like a doctor recommending a surgery or recommending a medicine, right? So let's start that all over. Chris, I want to put my search. Yeah, I'm probably going to wait three to six months, you know, till I look into buying a home. Yeah, Enrique, I totally hear you. Uh, I'm just a bit curious what what's going on in three to six months while you're waiting so long. Um, you know, I just want to save more money for my down payment. I just want to save up a little bit more. Gotcha, gotcha, Enrique. Hey, uh, I just want, want to know, uh, do you know where you stand right now as far as your down payment? I mean, I got about 50 grand saved. Um, okay, ask more questions about, do you know where you stand, like what that gets you, or have you looked into the financial part of it? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you got 50 grand saved, you know that, that's a, that's a good, decent amount of a down payment. You know, have you ever looked at any other options as far as financing? No, not really. Honestly, I've just been saving money. I mean, I know I want to buy something, but I haven't really looked into it. Got you, Enrique. Uh, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, what I recommend, let's get together on a Zoom tomorrow. Are you free in the evenings or afternoons? Tell me what's going to happen when we get together. Okay. So Enrique, what, what's going to happen on uh, when we meet on Zoom? You know, we're going to go over over your finances and see what your options are as far as this financing goes. You'll have a, you're going to have a lender there. This is where now you got to yeah. like sell the appointment, right? You got to sell why I need to meet with you. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll have a lender on the line on the Zoom, and then we can just go over options and see what what fits best for you. Okay. I'm going to stop you there. So you're doing great, bro. I know I'm, you're new, right? How long have you been in the biz for? Uh, this is my first week, technically. All right. First week. I want you guys to see that, right? But like, if you get this stuff down, like there's no reason why you can't be booking appointments left and right, right? And this is your first week. So this is good that you're being put on the spot right now because you're going to grow from this. So I want you guys to understand every single client that you talk to has a problem, right? They have some sort of problem or issue or hurdle that's stopping them from moving to the next stage in the, in the sales process. You need to be the person that is trying to figure out what the problem is and coming up with solutions for them, right? So think of yourself like a consultant, like an advisor, and try to get into that, that, uh, that position where you're speaking with authority, right? So if I'm telling you my problem is I want to save more money, well, then you got to say, well, hey, do you actually know how much you need to save? Have you looked into the finance stuff? When we meet, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over all this and we're going to figure out this problem for you. And then we'll see if it makes sense, right? So I want you to understand that we're problem solvers, right? When someone wants to wait, it's because there's some sort of issue. So you got to be able to present why they need to meet with you and how that's going to help them solve their potential problem. If they have. Does that make sense, Chris? Yeah. Okay. So you got some framework there. Um, I would take some notes down, whatever you just learned right now, take some notes down. And then your job is now to practice the hell out of this, right? Just practice, practice, practice. And then next time you're going to be more confident, more confident. And the more confident you are, the more the person's going to believe you on the other side of the phone, right? You want them to believe that you believe what you're talking about. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see if we got one more, one more, and then we're wrapping up, guys.
we went to a lot of stuff. Um, Managing pipeline, better flow, tonality. We did a lot of that. Suggesting rather than telling. I think we covered a lot of the uh, a lot of the the majority of them. So here's what I want you guys to do um, to make this effective, right? Like otherwise, what I don't want to happen is like, okay, we had a good training. Yeah, it sounded great. I learned some stuff. But then you go back out and you're doing the same things that you were already doing, right? There's no growth in that. So I want everyone to take two minutes right now and write some write down somewhere, right? What are a couple key bullet points that you learned from, that you learned today, right? Like a couple key adjustments you got to make because all of you guys probably got something different from what we just talked about, right? You got little bits and pieces, little nuggets. Where were the two or three things that went off today that you got to make adjustments in? Uh, Something that you need to tweak to how you're doing things. Maybe a system, maybe a spreadsheet, maybe your FirePoint, whatever it might be. What's the, what are the action items now from this training today? Okay, uh, update on proper, uh, who wrote? Be assertive, tone up the sales side more. Don't ask for permission, be more upfront. Absolutely. Be more curious, ask more questions, sell the appointment, figure out what their problem is and provide a solution. Yes, schedule a daily roundup, firepoint sheets and tasks. Have a bookmark for your hot and nurture leads. Cool, you guys are posting this all in the chat. Should have been more clear about that, my bad. Yeah, write it in the chat, guys, sorry. <laughs> if you haven't, if you wrote it down on paper, that's fine, but now put it in the chat. What's your takeaway? How to bookmark hot leads, all right, let's go. Utilize FirePoint better to follow up with leads. Yep. FirePoint, guys, honestly, it, it does a lot of stuff. Like, if you really go in there and dive deep and you start watching all the training videos, you can set up tasks, reminders. The tasks sync up with your calendar, your Google calendar. Like, there's so many things you can do to go deep with FirePoint. Um, yeah, become a FirePoint ninja, guys. Like, I'm telling you, if you, you can run your whole business out of FirePoint. Okay, guys, um, thank you everybody who came today and participated. Thanks for your contribution. Thanks for being vulnerable, putting yourself out there. Um, Cass wrote, use key phrases. I recommend, does that sound fair? Yep, that was, that's all language, Cass. That's all sales, um, linguistics, NLP. It's, it's all like the process of, uh, what's the word? Um, influencing, right? That's a skill, right? Like influencing people by saying certain words and certain phrases. But here's the thing, guys, I'm gonna leave you with this, is you gotta spend time focusing on this stuff. Whatever it is you need to do in your business, whether it's be more assertive, whether it's your fire point, whatever it might be. Like, I know we come in in the mornings for prospecting and then we do training, 
but I see a lot of drop off in the afternoon where people just disappear. I don't know where they go, right? Hopefully you're on appointments, but I know a lot of people aren't, aren't on appointments. During the afternoon, that's your downtime. If you don't have appointments, that's when you need to be working on whatever it is that you wrote down. If it's cleaning up your fire point, that's your time to now work on your business, right? If it's practicing your script or getting together with someone in role playing or recording yourself and trying to sound more assertive or, you know, creating bookmarks, like that's the time to be doing that. Don't just disappear for the second half of the day. Uh, make sure you're putting in a solid eight hours a day, if not more, especially in the beginning of your business. In the beginning of your business, you should be in the office all freaking day, right? Like as much as humanly possible so that you can get ramped up as quick as possible. Then once you get busy with clients, then you're going to be able to kind of set your own schedule a little bit more. But in the beginning, you're, you're trying to get your business off the ground. It's going to take a lot more effort because you got to push that thing. Um, Use the afternoons to post on social media as well, right? Get your name out there. Um, hope this guys, this was valuable for you guys. Let me know if you need anything. If you need any one-on-one -on -one coaching, guys, that's the other thing too. Feel free to message me and we could set something up one-on-one -on -one as well if you have a particular thing you need help with, right? I'm here to help you guys. All right, let me know if you need anything, guys. Have a great day.